Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at printing a lithographic Christmas ornament. So, tell you what, uh, let's hop right into it. So, let's head over to the computer. We'll start building it. So, what we'll start out with creating this Christmas ornament is actually a website uh, named 3DP Rocks Lithophane. So I'll put the link to this down below. And what we do is we choose a file, and I've already picked one here of uh, my dog, Mr. Bojangles. And this is when he was studying for his PhD, a rather smart looking fellow with his glasses. And so I've already selected and uploaded this file. So now I'm gonna switch to the Models tab. Now this could take a little while to switch over uh, to the Models. Uh, because it's a rather large file and what's happening is it needs to actually render this model. Okay, so uh, again, as I mentioned, it takes a moment or two to, to load over this model. Now, one of the things to notice is you can, you can shape this lithophane uh, in different ways. We're just going to use a uh, regular square shape. So we have uh, the lithophane here and you can kind of move it around on the build plate. Uh, however, what we're going to do now is we're going to need to download this into Tinkercad. So you simply use the download button and you provide it a friendly name. As you can see here, I've already downloaded it. Um, so I'm just going to cancel out of this because what we do is we have it over here in Tinkercad. Now, uh, in, in full disclosure, this is a pretty big file, so it's going to take some time to move it around, load it. It's also going to take Tinkercad some time to process it. So let's jump in and take a look. So our base lithophane is 100 millimeters by 75 millimeters. Now we're going to need to kind of crop this around. So we're going to move this out of the way a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring a circle out here and we're going to make this circle, uh, we're going to call this 73 by 73. And then we're going to turn this into a hole and move this off to the side. Then we're going to bring a square out here and then we're going to change this to be um, 125 by... Uh, I'm just going to say 100 and we're going to make it 10 millimeters tall. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring our circle onto this pane and then we're going to select these as a group and we're going to do my favorite command. We're going to do align. So we've now aligned the circle and the square. And it sounds like a song in that circle and the square. So I'm going to move it down a little bit and then I'm going to group this. Now what's going to happen is this is going to give me a cutout and then what I'm going to do is slide this up and then I'm going to slide my lithophane back in here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a hole so I can see my lithophane underneath and again go up here select them all let's do my favorite command and let's whoop, let's get it all right first and then let's do uh, and a line on it. So we will start with this center. Now, remember we made the whole 73 by 73, so we got a little extra room. So I kind of like how that's coming out. You can see his face in the middle of that. It's kind of trimming off the extras. And then so what we're going to do is tip the work plane back down a little bit, click on the, uh, the hole. We're going to move it down a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to group. Now, this could take, again, a minute or so. There's a lot of triangles in this STL creating this lithophane. And if you have problems importing your lithophane, maybe your picture is a little bit large, what you might want to do is, is over here, when you go to import it, there'll be a scale command. You might want to have, scale it down, and then if you need to, you can scale it back up. But you can see up here the uh, little arrows going, so it's actually processing its little hearts out to knock this down. All right, so we got that first piece done, but uh, right now it just kind of looks like a funny cookie. So what we want to do is I want to bring on another um, circle, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going since this is this is 73, I'm going to make this uh, 72 by uh, 72. And then I'm going to turn that into a hole. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring myself another circle out here. And I'm going to make this one, um, let's say if that one's 72 
I'm going to make this one, um, whoops, I want to make it 75. Now, and again, you can change this for your aesthetics. Uh, I want I want a kind of a, a narrow band aesthetics. And, uh, oh, one of the things to note, this is about three millimeters high. So I'm going to make this one, I'm going to make this outer ridge, what will end up being the outer ridge, I'm going to make this guy five. So it's going to stand a little bit proud, and then I'm going to bring that hole over. And again, I'm going to go up, use my favorite align command. So these are dead center. Greatest command in Tinkercad. And then what I'm going to do is select the hole. I'm going to push it down, and then again, select this and group it. And then I'm going to bring this guy in, bring Mr. Bojangles back into the picture. And then again, I'm going to align. And then now this all looks pretty good. I'm going to make sure that I'm sitting at zero. And then I'm going to click on Bo and make sure he's sitting at zero. So both are at zero. And then so I'm going to group this. And so we have we have sort of a medallion. Now you can kind of do a lot of things with this. But now what I want to do is I want to bring another uh, circle up here. I'm going to make him, because we made the other one five, I'm going to make that five. And then I'm going to make this ten. And again, um, the aesthetics are a little bit up to you. Um, whoops, screw this one up. So I'm going to make this 10. I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to go out here. And I'm going to make this now 3. And 3. And I'm going to make this one 8. So it stands a little bit proud. And I'm going to turn this guy into a hole. And I think you see might see now where I'm going with this. Is I'm going to make some place for the hook. And again, go up here, hit a line, boom, boom. We're now centered in this, and I want to take a look, move this guy down a little bit, and and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to group him, so I knock that hole out, and then again I'm going to move this up here, and I'm going to make it just the slightest overlap, but now I want to make sure I've got it centered, so again, I'm going to bang out a quick adjustment. Now I'm only going to adjust the center and then what I'm going to do is uh, group this and here you go. So here is a uh, Christmas ornament. So I tell you what, let's send the G-code out and or save out the STL, sorry, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, print it on the one house. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, download for 3D printing. I'm going to save it as an STL. Now, notice down here it's waiting for Tinkercad. Uh, again, this is going to take quite some time to download this guy as an STL. There are tons and tons of triangles in this lithophane, so this may take a minute. Okay, so we now have the dialog box for this, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to leave it as ornament for the time being. And then I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to close this out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, open Cura. And uh, Cura will open. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the model. And I need to remember where I saved the model. All right, here we go, ornament. So I'm going to open this up. Uh, number one, I want to make sure I got the right machine. Yep, one how selected. And there we go, we can see Bo uh, with his glasses on. And nice looking little ornament there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this at a uh, 0.2 layer height. Uh, I'm going to leave it at, at uh, 0.4 shell thickness. We don't need a lot here. And then I'm going to put it as an infill density of about 10% because I don't want uh, a whole lot. Um, I am going to print closer to 220 because the Wan Hao is kind of wanky on its temperature reading, so this is more tr more like a um, 200. And then I'm going to set my bed at 60. I'm not going to use any supports or platform adhesion. This is perfectly fine. And all the other settings are fine. So uh, according to this, it should take about uh, 47 minutes to print. So let's go ahead and cut over to a time lapse and uh, watch it.
Okay, welcome back from the time lapse. So, one of the things I forgot to mention when I set this up was about retraction, or at least I believe I did. So I'm going to put the retraction settings over there. So one of the things you want to do is you either want to turn off retraction or set it to such a level where uh, retraction doesn't take place because I forgot to do that. And uh, this first one was the result of that. And, and the, the uh, printer head jammed up and it was just a total mess. In fact, I'm not sure if you can see if I if I can get a zoom in on this, but this this is also one of the problems with retraction uh, if set incorrectly. So I, again, I don't know if you'll be able to see this if I can get a zoom in shot of this. However, you can see where this is all torn up by the gear not being able to extrude because what's happened is when it does a lot of frequent retractions, what happens is this gets, you know, it's hot, then cold, hot, then cold. And it what I refer to as crystallizes the end. This end, this end piece is very, very hard. And what happens is it jams up in the nozzle and it just doesn't go anywhere. And so uh, you get you know either way under extru extrusion or no extrusion and that's what happened in this first one so once I realized my error I went through and and corrected that uh, but again hopefully that came out and you can kind of see that the next one I did after I fixed the the um, retraction which I had put the thing off to the side I did this one with one layer and 10% uh, infill and then just to kind of give an idea I went back and I did this one at uh, two layers and 20% infill. And you notice it's a, this one came out a little bit better than this one, at, at least that's what I think. Um, because as you mess around with the different infills and layering, uh, you'll get a different type of contrast to the lith uh, lithophane. And so again, I think this one came out a little bit better. So this one, this one is, these two are the same, it's just this one I forgot to turn off retraction and it totally messed it up because you can kind of see how it just did not come out. Uh, but with retraction off, this one came out fine and so did this one. So I had a lot of fun doing these and I do have a lot of fun with, with the lithophanes. And again, utilizing this method, you can do some interesting things. So instead of making a Christmas ornament, you can make a stand, which stands in front of an LED candle, or all kinds of interesting things. You can even use this to make Christmas cards and, and, and send them to people via snail mail. So um, again, hopefully you learned something interesting from this. If you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. Helps the channel. If you have any questions, hit me up below. And hey, make sure you subscribe to the channel. A lot more coming. And then also up in the corner is our swag shop. So if you're looking for some interesting maker swag for the uh, holidays, be sure to hit it up. A lot of interesting things there. See you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.